This video continues on a series of video on how stuff is being made. I'm down at Doncaster Cables with Aaron to look at Fire Performance Cables. Can you tell me a little bit about them? Yes, our brand of Fire Performance Cable is called Fireshow. We do a standard and an enhanced version of the cable. Uh, and the way we manufacture the cable is quite unique. So we've gone with a unique construction and design, and it brings lots of features and benefits for the end user and the installer. So impact resistance wise, ours is a lot more impact resistant because we're filling all of the air gaps in the cable with sheathing compound. So if you were to accidentally drop something on the cable or stand on it, then you have less of an indentation, less risk of damaging the cores. Also, that means that it's more less kinkable or more resistant to kinks. So as you're pulling the cable through a tray work, if it was to kink over, um, our cable would go back to its original shape and again, protect the cores. And then your favorite from today is the smoke transmission. So we can demonstrate smoke transmission where a compestor's cable could act like a conduit and smoke be drawn into another room, whereas ours, because it's filled, we've got no smoke transmission in the cable. I think it means now we're going to have to step into Doncaster Cables to see how this cable is being made. However, you did promise me at the end, what am I going to get a chance to see? We're going to set fire to some of the Fireshore cable and see it in high performance testing. We've already recorded a video of this, which was the twin in CPC video, and we went into quite a lot of detail about how this machine works but this is still the same process for the fire performance cables. Once the wires are drawn, they're then fed into the back of the extrusion machine. So here you can see we're flying off a copper wire and then that will come through around some tension wheels and some pulleys so we can keep the wire at the right tension before it feeds into the extrusion head. At this stage, we see one of the main differences to the twin and CPC that we made in the other video. The extruders on the twin and CPC line are processing a thermoplastic PVC and we're melting down granules so that they become a molten PVC and we can form it around the copper. And in this extrusion line, it's the reverse. So we've got a cold silicon, which we're passing down the extruder barrel and it's all chilled. And then we have to cure the silicon afterwards to then form its shape. In traditional thermoplastic extrusion, we'd be going into a cold water trough now to cool the product. Because this is the opposite, we actually use heat to cure the silicon. So this initial oven is a high temperature thermal shock oven, about 500 to 600 degrees Celsius. And after this oven, there's then a long array of other ovens, three in our case, where the silicon is continued to be warmed at 300 degrees Celsius as it travels down the whole line. The length of this extruder is around about 50 meters, but the cables actually come back through the extruder multiple times. So it extends the length of the line to about 150 meters, which allows us to give a slow curing process for the silicon. After the ovens, there's quite a lot of processes happen in quick succession. So we have a laser meter counter, so we can record the length of the cable. Then a high voltage spark tester, which is continuously testing that there's no pinprick defects in the insulation or any insulation faults. And then we have a chalking unit to apply a layer of chalk to aid in strippability. And then finally, it's onto the take up drum. This machine typically running between 200 meters a minute and 300 meters a minute and we're making bulk lengths matched up for the next process, which we'll be laying up. We've now got the cores. So in this instance, we're making a two core and CPC. So we've got a blue and a brown conductor and then a bare earth wire being fed up out of the box. The bare earth wire that we're using is a tinned copper circuit protective conductor. These cores are then twisted together. All the twist is coming from inside of the machine, which is the, the bow inside the machine. But you'll see the twist traveling out the machine and up towards the conductors. As the conductors come through, we go through a high voltage spark tester again to further test that there's no defects in the insulation. And then we add a tape around the cores, again to aid in strippability. We feed in the CPC. And then the next part is adding the metallic tape, which is a key part of the fire barrier. The whole package of the fire performance cable makes up its characteristics and performance, but the aluminium tape is a critical part. We're adding the aluminium tape and we're adding it in helically. So the tape is wrapped around and around the cores with a, a large overlap. And this gives us a lot of protection, makes the cable robust so it can be bent easily. It can be dressed without fear of deforming the cable. Our Fireshore 500 is quite different to most of the cables in the market. Most of the cables will have a longitudinal tape, which is fed in at the extrusion stage. And we choose to do this, although it's a slower process, we're adding a more of an overlap over the tape we're getting better continuity with the CPC, and then we're getting better data transmission because we're twisting the cores together and adding the tape at the twisting stage. So although it's a longer process and an additional process, it gives us lots more feature and benefits in the cable. 
Inside the take up booth of the strander, the drum is rotating, which is pulling the cores and the tape onto the drum. And it's the bow that's spinning around the drum that puts the twist into the cores and the tape. So the cores and the tape come into the bow, travel all the way around it, through a tensioning wheel and then back onto the drum. Looking at the cable makeup so far, we've got an aluminium metallic tape, which is providing one of the fire barriers. We then have the circuit protective conductor. We have the inner easy tear tape and then the two cores blue and brown. We now need to sheath this which, with the outer sheathing, which is then the final part of the fire barrier. To do this, we come into the extrusion line. We're paying off the drum and then we're melting down thermoplastic, low smoke, non-halogen material around the tape. Our tape is specially developed. It includes a, a copolymer. So as the sheathing comes through and processes onto the tape, the tape adheres to the sheath so that when you strip back the sheathing, you can then remove the tape at the same time. And with the sheathing, we're actually pressure extruding the sheathing around the tape and around the cores. So there's no air gaps left inside the cable. There's no chance of smoke transmission along the cable in a fire situation. It also makes it more robust, more durable, more resistant to kinking and makes it easier to install. The cable is now red hot as it comes from the extruder head. So 180 degrees Celsius and we need to cool that down. So we go through the water baths where we're applying cold water to cool the product. It'll then go through an air wipe system to wipe that water off before we go and high voltage test the cable yet again, just to check that there's no electrical defects in the outer sheath into the tape. After this process, it's onto the final take up drum where we can wind bulk lengths before we wind them into 50s, 100s, 250s or 500 meter reels. This is an example of an automated winding machine. And on this occasion we're winding into 100 meter reels and this is actually going to overseas export markets in Dubai. We have lots of different approvals on the Fireshore 500 products. So we have BASEC approval and also LPCB which stands for Loss Prevention Certification Board. And these approvals mean that there's a third party verifying that the cable is fit for purpose and complies with the regulations. High performance cable has some stringent regulations, in particular with fire testing and different types of fire testing. And we can show you some examples of the types of fire tests that we do on the product. There's a wide variety of fire performance testing that can be conducted on a fire performance cable. These range from resistance to fire alone, to resistance to water, resistance to impact, and then you get standard and enhanced versions of the test. There's some confusion in the marketplace with regards to pH 120 and pH 60 um, and with regards emergency lighting and where they can be used. The pH is the duration of the test. So 120 means that it lasts 120 minutes, pH 120. This doesn't necessarily mean that it's an enhanced cable as you can pass fire performance tests at pH 120 and still be a standard fire performance cable. So it's important to make sure that you're using the correct specification fire performance cable for the correct installations. The example that we're showing is a fire performance test which is resistance to fire impact and water all during the same test. The whole of this test will last 30 minutes. The first 15 minutes will be resistance to fire and shock and every five minutes there'll be an impact on the cable and this is replicating things falling down in the event of a fire, hitting girders, causing vibrations. And then for the second 15 minutes of the test, it'll be resistance to fire impact and water. So a water spray comes on, the impact still continue every five minutes. And this is to replicate the sprinklers turning on in a building. Throughout the test, the fire performance cable needs to maintain circuit integrity for the test to be compliant. We're proud to manufacture our Fireshore cables in the UK and we feel they bring lots of features and benefits to the installer. If you want to check out how we manufacture twin and CPC cable, click the video on the screen.